library, and it's nice to see uh, that collaboration come out. So that's great. One more time for a Tom and uh, Ann and a silent white. All right, Art Will. Now, have I missed anybody? Uh, you know, I, I know I haven't missed anybody that's written here, but did anybody else care to sign up? And after? Anybody, just bark it out. <laughs> All right, I guess not. So after Art, then uh, we'll go back around to the top. So that would mean that Meg, if you have something else, uh, you know, you're, you're on deck, all right? All right, everybody give it up for Art Will. You like to sit or anything, Art? They stand up? All right, you're looking good, by the way. Thank you. The dapper dressing Mr. Art Will, everybody. Yeah. Yeah, I'm one of those uh, uh, group sales managers for a hotel, so I don't know if you ever heard of a small chain called Holiday Inn Express. <laughs> so, uh, you have to dress good because you're trying to sell people your rooms, right? Oh yeah, and that's why I hung out smarter, because I did not get a, I got a GED and not, too. I think I got a college education, right? Okay, the name of uh, this first piece is called How I Got a Job at Burger King. And there's always two sides to every story, my side and the truth. So I'm going to give you both before I go into the poem. The first one is, I actually saw a friend that had my name, because my real name is not Art Will. I know you didn't know that. But it's actually Arthur Williams. Too many letters, you know, put on the shirt, so Art Will is a short version. But my friend Arthur, one day he came and he visited me, and I was at the Marriott Hotel at the time. And he had a name tag that said Arthur, and at the top it said Burger King. And I thought to myself, that would be smooth to work at Burger King. So that's how the poem was really inspired. However, the, 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 one, the story that I made up was, I like it better, was that I'm responsible for people going to a fast food restaurant and they make you pay first. Because when I used to go, you used to pay after you eat. But because of this story, which is called How I Got a Job at Burger King, everybody pays before they eat when they go to fast food restaurants. OK, ready? Ready. I was wishing to never go hungry again as I was walking down the street, looking in garbage can and dog houses for something good to eat. When a lady approached me in a great big Cadillac, she asked me, was I hungry? Hey, sir, do you want a snack? My stomach started growling and making loud noises, so she told me to hop in and didn't give me any choices. She took me to a restaurant by the name of Burger King. She told me to order whatever I wanted, to order anything. So I ordered a Whopper, a fish sandwich, pop and fries. She ordered twice as much and told me that afterwards she had a surprise. Well, as I was eating, she was drinking, and as I was drinking, she was eating. That woman must have been hungry too because it was me she was beating. She then asked to be excused because she had to go to the job. I let her go and I continued to eat. After all, how was I to know she was a cop? A few minutes later, the waiter approached the table and asked me to pay the bill. I said, hey, my date to the, went to the restaurant and she's going to pay for this meal. A few minutes later, I looked outside. I didn't see that Cadillac. It was then and then that I knew that woman wasn't coming back. So for a year now, I've been doing for free all of Burger King's dishes. Happy now, my hunger gone, because the con helped me with one of my greatest wishes. Yeah. OK, here's another story. This one's called, How I Discover the Hair Week. Once again, there's two sides to every story. There's my side, and there's, there's the truth. My side was that. I said, you know what? I can look like a million bucks, so I'm going to tell people that I invented the hair weave. OK, that's my side. The truth is, I actually took a friend to the hair salon and watched her get those braids weaved into her hair. Hence, how I discovered the hair weave. Years ago, I went to get done my hair. I sat down to get a haircut and went to sleep in the chair. When I woke up, I saw that everyone was bald, and when I looked in the mirror, that wasn't all. For all my hair was nothing, it looked like a basketball. I was so devastated, I jumped to the floor, and I started to crawl. I scooped up all my hair, and I placed it in my lap. I wanted my hair back on my head so bad, I didn't care that it had naps. <laughs> the barber told me that his shop only did bald heads, and that was on the sign that I had saw, but had not read. I told him I would pay him $100 to put my hair back on my head, so that barber took out a needle and also a lot of thread. Oh. And although it was painful, and I thought I would break and crack, I ignored those things. After all, I wanted my hair back. 
Then when he was through, I was all so happy because guess what? Not only did he put my hair back on my head, but it was no longer nappy. <laughs> then I looked in the mirror and a light bulb appeared over me as I came up with a great plan, a good idea to make lots of money. Then I opened up a shop and women would come and never leave until they paid me $100 and got themselves a hair week. <laughs> That's Art Will, ladies and gentlemen. He's uh, he's saving letters. So uh, if anybody has a long name like Ann, <laughs> donate the rest of those letters to Art over there. He's got some good use for them. All right, Meg. Meg Harding, everybody. Let's see if I can mess this up again, shall we? Careful. Three nuts. One.
also another Nancy Griffith song, so we will uh, just go for it. Uh-huh. 